Welcome to Steve Means Business, the podcast dedicated to promoting and highlighting small business all across America. As an entrepreneur who has launched many small businesses in various industries over the years and blessed with the gift of gab, Steve was made for this podcast. Let's do this. Okay, guys, like the intro says, welcome to Steve Means Business, the podcast dedicated to promoting small businesses all across the country. My name is Steve Weinberg. This is my chocolate lab, Archie. Get used to looking at this mug. You're going to see a lot of Archie throughout all the podcasts, a lot of content, great stuff. And how about that set? You don't see too many sets like that behind us. Oh, Glory and Archie, two of my favorite things. All right, we'll put Archie down for a moment here right now. We got to bribe him with a little treat. Okay, each episode, you're going to meet and see business owners from all walks of life, all industries, all across the country, white collar, blue collar, everything in between. Small business is really the lifeblood of our economy, guys. I mean, that's really what drives our economy. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself in a moment, but I've been a serial entrepreneur, a small business owner in a few different industries, along with my gift of gab. I think this podcast is the perfect venue for me to tell you all about small business all across America. Obviously, we're going to focus a lot on companies here in Phoenix, but I have some national companies as well that we're going to talk about in addition. All right, let's get down to it. A little bit about me. I'm a serial entrepreneur at heart. I've tried many businesses over the years. Some have made it, some have not. Nobody bats a thousand. I mean, even Ted Williams on his best year, when he hit 400, he still failed six times out of 10. I think Fred Smith, the guy from FedEx, what do you go, BK, a couple, two, three times before FedEx took off? Nobody gets it right, or I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say nobody. Very few people hit a home run right out of the gate. We have our, our stumbles, we have our, our challenges, but ultimately, when you're successful in small business, that, that is just such a rewarding, gratifying thing. Everybody just, it's a great feeling. Whether you build the next great dog toy and take it to market and make millions, or you sell it off and ride off in the sunset, either way, that's the American dream. The small business owner creates something, brings it to market, helps a lot of people, provides a great product or service, makes millions, God forbid, during along the way, and he lives happily, he or she lives happily ever after. That's some of the stories you're gonna hear about. Okay, enough about that, about me. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a sports nut, I'm a jock. I was a talk radio geek as a kid. I always was interested in listening to talk radio. I just love that, that give and take between the host and the guest. And I think podcasting is that next evolution of talk radio. You still see today, lots of talk radio professionals. They simultaneously have a podcast. There's a lot of cross-pollination, but I think that that natural give and take about people just sitting, you know, having over lunch or having a beer, sitting just across from each other, just talking shop. That's the natural flow. That's why I love podcasting. You could just be yourself. You can let it rip. It's that natural flowing conversation where it's not as scripted and you could have that give and take. You might be going north. All of a sudden you're going to go veer east or west. And I think people love that authenticity, that natural conversation between a couple of people they just, they relate to that. They gravitate to that. And that's why I think you're going to hear me say a couple of times, I'm a natural for this format. I'm going to tell you right now. Today's the maiden voyage. We'll see where it goes. But I'm telling you, I love this podcasting format. I think you have to have some of that crazy energy in you. And Lord knows I got plenty of it. It's that nervous, good energy. But like I said, if you don't have a little bit of crazy in you, I think life would be pretty boring. So I've got some notes here. You'll see me occasionally referencing to them. But it, you're going to see Steve just let it rip, you know, right from the hip. Hey, that kind of rhymes. Whether it's a product or a service or a company or, or something I come across that I'm excited about, I want to shout it from the rooftops, guys. I'm the type of guy that I go into a new pizza store or a new pizza shop, and I have the greatest pizza or a chicken parm or meatballs, and I'm the type that calls or, or texts 20 buddies and say, dude, you got to try this pizza shop. It's out of sight. Or I, I went to a mechanic that serviced my vehicle that did not rip me off because let's face it, a lot of them do. And I had a great experience. I want to tell everybody all about it. That's just how I am. Conversely, if I have a bad experience, you're going to hear about it. You're going to know about it as well. 
I, I, I call balls and strikes. We got Archie. How about this for AdLib TV? We got Archie because they got treats here. He's just famished right here. Okay. Professionally, the last 25 years, my main job, if you will, I've been an executive recruiter in the technology industry. I went to work for a techno for a recruiting firm for one year. And then, you know, as the saying goes, you learn what not to do. And then I went off on my own, took the leap of faith. And for 25 years, I did full cycle recruiting where I ran the firm, I hired and fired. And like I said, it is a tough, tough business. For those of you that are not familiar with it, full cycle recruiting is, is about as tough as any industry out there. I've got to go out on the one hand and find the talent, scour through lots of job seekers, candidates, resumes, talk to people, interview them face to face on the phone, Zoom. And then I have to go to the company and I have to sell my services, if you will, Microsoft or let's say Facebook or Google or what have you, and say, hey guys, if you need help building your organization, I'm the guy, I'm the recruiter. So I would get my job description from the company with the specs, what they want. Then I would have to go out and find the necessary talent. And like I said, qualify that talent, sift through it, interview them. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rounds of interviewing at the company site, that's right. No shortage of extra steps from corporate America. And then hopefully with the grace of God, there would be a match. It is a very tough business. It's a very beat you down, kill or be killed, toxic business. And after 25 years, frankly, I said I wanted to make a little bit of a change. I still do some very strategic retained consulting at times, but for the most part, I've made a pivot. I say after 25 years, I think I wanna try some, a couple of new things. So I've had a lot of jobs over the years, too many to list them all, but I'm gonna give you a little flavor of what Steve Weinberg is all about and not to go Sean Hannity on you here and tell you I was a roofer, I was a bartender, I was a contractor, I, I was a talk show host, this, that, but I have done a lot of things. I have a lot of interests and the fact is, um, like I said, I love trying new things. I don't want to do the same thing every day, day in and day out. So here's a little bit about what I've done so you can learn more about me, okay? I'm an avid carpenter. I'm a DIY builder. Ever since I was a kid, even though I didn't have any formal training, I was always the kid that maybe took that TV set apart. I couldn't put it back together, but I took it apart. I always wondered how it all worked, how everything came together. We lived... In, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I probably should have mentioned that right off the bat. I've lived in Arizona for 33 years, but I am a Brooklyn, New York native. And we would pass by the Verrazano Bridge all the time, not far from our neighborhood. And Dad and I would always wonder, how does that suspension bridge stay up? I'm not sure if it's still, but I know at one point it was the largest suspension bridge in North America. Not to go Cliff Clavin on you here a little bit. Hey, Nami, a little fact, right? A little factoid. And we always wondered, how the hell does that thing stay up? How does it support all those vehicles and all that weight? So I was always a kind of a, a, a tinkerer, if you will. But I've been a carpenter in every house I've lived at out here in Arizona. One of the first things I made sure of, check the garage to see what kind of schematics I can make for the, work, for the woodworking shop. During COVID, my industry staffing obviously slowed down quite a bit. Not only were they not hiring, but they were firing people. And I saw a story of of a retired carpenter in California, he got the idea to build and donate desks for kids because so many kids were doing their schoolwork from home. I saw that, I've got the woodworking shop out there in the garage, and I said, hey, I'm gonna give that a try. Well, sure enough, the first weekend I knocked out, I think like three or four of them. I made some modifications to the design as per my specs. And I saw that and I said, wow, this is really cool. And I just, I love working in the shop. It took my mind off what was obviously COVID, very uncertain time, especially in the staffing industry. And I just loved it. And the gratification of building something and then giving it to a kid or a family in need doesn't get any better than that. So I took it and I ran with that ball. And after the first week, I pumped out 15 desks. And it just grew and grew and grew and took on a life of its own. And I got people involved with it. And after I knocked out those 15, I said, hey, I think I may make this kind of a venture, if you will, of some sort, whether a nonprofit or, or for-profit. And after I did those 15, I actually, with my big mouth and gift of gab, I contacted the local news stations to say, hey, you want to see a good feel-good story? I just built these desks and I'm actually setting up a donation day, whether at Home Depot or some other companies I coordinated with, to give the desks away. That's right. I'm the builder. I'm the advertising executive. I'm the PR guy. I'm, 
I do it all. That's kind of my nature. And sure enough, Heather Moore from Channel 3 TV at the time, beautiful news anchor, covered the story, blasted it all over. And that night, I had 300 requests in my inbox as I gave out my email address. Hey, I want a desk. I have a family here. I have a foster family. I need a desk. And it just went ballistic. Long story short, built and donated over 250 desks. I'm really proud of. I still do a few here and there. So that's one of the things. I'm an animal lover. Like we said, we got Archie here. Archie's my third chocolate lab. I had yellow and black. Now Archie's my chocolate. He is a psychopath at times. He has crazy energy, but he also could be super cool and mellow. Let's get him up over here. Come here, Bob. Hopefully the bald spot didn't show too much, but Archie, he could be the star of the show sometimes. He just sits here and he loves it. He could be really mellow like now, or he could be a nut job. Archie greets people the way Lawrence Taylor greeted Joe Theismann in the backfield way back in the day when he snapped his leg in two. Archie comes up, he hits you in the face and says, hey, I want to be your buddy, right? But I love dogs. I love all animals. And like I said, Archie's my third lab. You're going to see a lot of content with this boy. Let's see how long he can handle it here. I've also been a home flipper and investor. I've probably been a part of about 15 or 20 transactions over the years where I was swinging a hammer sometimes. Sometimes I'm just writing a check. Sometimes I did both. I've been a PGA golf professional. I, that's right. I passed the playing test where I think the percentage for people passing is only 2 or 3%. Passed on my second attempt. Pretty proud of that. But that wasn't the ultimate path for me. But I met some great people along the way. And like I said, developed some game. I can knock it around pretty good. Currently, I'm a USTA and PTR certified tennis instructor. I teach at one of the facilities here, local in Scottsdale. I teach all you know, kids, adults, private classes, group classes. And like I said, I've been playing the game since I'm a kid. Uh, I think I'm pretty okay at it, pretty good. And I love helping other people really improve. And if you want to bomb some serves or rip some forehands, I'm your guy. Come see me. We'll put Archie down. It's enough for now. He's going to meander about. But like I said, I, I currently teach tennis. About a year and a half ago, I started doing what we call Reviews by Steve. I've got those channels on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, where I go around and kind of a takeoff of maybe Portnoy in the pizza review. But, you know, I'll go to that restaurant or that establishment, eat their food, give you, you know, give you the no filter review, what I think, good, better, and different. Whether it's a retail store or a service provider, a mechanic, a restaurant, uh, an HVAC company, a real estate company. Anywhere where I have interacted with those companies or done business or I've been a customer, and I basically posted my reviews online. Like I said, reviews by Steve. I just, I thought the name kind of clicked. I think that's a springboard for what I'm doing here with the podcast, guys, and you're going to hear more about that. I also started a property management company uh, a couple of years ago where I look after the homes of snowbirds and seasonal residents when they're gone, go to the homes a couple times a month, making sure everything's running a okay to me, that's just a natural. I mean, that, that, that's a no-brainer. I've had various jobs in the hospitality and the restaurant business, the hotel service industry. And like I said, I've met so many people along the way. I think that really teaches you how to deal with so many different types of people. I, I think it's fantastic. I'm a sports nut. I'm a jock. In the last 15 months, I got addicted to pickleball. My buddy, Sean Holden. Sean, how you doing? One of my tennis buddies, he introduced me to pickleball. Went to the court, and in one in, in two minutes, I knew I was hooked. The needle's in the arm, guys. I'm a full-blown addict. I play six to seven days a week. I love the game. I'm playing at a you know, 4.5 level, you know, competitive level. And, and I, I always try to play with players better than me. We even get a chance to play with some guys that are on the tour that live out here in Scottsdale. The game requires so much more athleticism, especially in singles, than I ever thought. I mean, it is really fast. You get one of those hands fights and doubles at the net. It is awesome. It was, I was made for this game. I love it. I love that quick hand-eye coordination. I was a hockey goalie when I was a kid. And I, I just think there's so many um, skills that cross over that, that are applicable for pickleball. And any of you people out there that just poo-poo on it and think it's for old farts that doesn't, ball doesn't bounce or go fast, you guys could not be any more wrong. You've got to give it a try. For many years, like I said, I've been listening to these podcasts, these talk radio hosts or these newscasters or commentators, and I say, I could do a better job of explaining it, or I could communicate that message better. No, no, no. Here's what I think. And I said, I'm going to get a podcast. I'm going to get a forum and give you my opinion. And that's why I think this is going to fly so well. The title, Steve Means Business. To me, 
That's like the old man, Marty, the old dad, God rest him. Anytime he would be serious about something or, or excited about something, he'd be like, Montana. That's how he would be. And Steve means business to me. That denotes excitement, passion, energy. And you're going to hear and meet and see all these business owners each episode. I'm going to have them on and I'll shut up in a little bit. I'm going to make it about them. I want them to tell their story, tell us their journey, how they made it, how they recovered when they fell down. Because nobody, like I said, knocks it out of the park right out of the gate. You're going to hear these stories. You're going to be inspired. You're going to be entertained. And who knows? You'll either frequent this business that you didn't know existed in your neighborhood. Or like I said, maybe it'll inspire you to go out and start a business of your own. Let's talk about Arizona because you're going to see a lot of Arizona businesses. You know, I'm going to feature out here. Arizona is such a great place to do business. We have such a friendly business climate. The tax policies are really conducive for companies coming out here, you know, relocating out here or putting down roots here. In so many different industries, we have businesses across all these industries, technology, obviously tourism, hospitality, you know, uh, retail, real estate, um, white collar, blue collar, it doesn't matter. Arizona is ripe for business. I hate to use the expression, we're on fire because it's 116 out there today, no joke. I was on the courts last night in 115 degree temperature, four hours, that's right. That's how much we love pickleball. But you're gonna see so many businesses continue to move here, relocate here, and the ones out here are just gonna grow like crazy. We have been like a rocket ship the last 15, 20 years in the technology sector, especially. Honeywell, Intel, on semiconductor. It started with Motorola 50, 60 years ago. I have a couple of friends there, folks worked for Motorola. Those were some of the early pioneers with technology companies in Arizona. And like I said, all these other companies coming out here, Arizona is just so ripe for the pickings as far as doing business out here. It's just a great place to work and live. We have so many activities you could do, hiking, biking, golf, obviously, tennis, pickleball, fishing, hunting. We have probably a half a dozen lakes within one hour of where I'm sitting here, Metropolitan Scottsdale, Phoenix. I mean, there's just so much to do out here. And even though our real estate industry has exploded and home values have gone up like a rocket ship in certain neighborhoods, we've tripled. That's right here. It's still, it's such a desirable place to be. You're seeing people move here all the time. We rank probably in the top 10 or 15 in the country for places to live and places to do business. So you're going to meet and see a lot of Arizona businesses here. One of the monster businesses here under construction now, the Taiwanese or the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, I think it's TSMC. They're out here by Ben Avery by the shooting range on the west side of town, which we do a lot of as well. I think they're gonna have something like 4,500 people to start. They're gonna employ so huge employer, huge company in Arizona to start. And like I said, it's just gonna attract other companies. There's a domino effect whether it's complementary companies or rival companies, Arizona is where it's at, guys, for growth in, in so many industries across the country. So if you like what you see, a little snippet here, a little sample, and you like what you hear, you need to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have graphics on here. We're going to have links on here. Like I said, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Steve Means Business. That's the handle. Go look us up, subscribe, support the channel, support the podcast. You're going to be entertained. You're going to meet and see some great new businesses. You're going to get some great ideas. And you're just, you're going to love this podcast. So we look forward to seeing you each week. You're going to see new episodes every week on the podcast. Looking forward to seeing and meeting a lot of new people. Take care, guys. That's going to do it for today's episode of Steve Means Business. Be sure to subscribe and share this podcast with all your friends. Keep a heads up for episodes every week.